Time to get this thing out of my shop. So I've got this little storage area back here behind my shop and it's, I guess it's like a garden shed and we used to have so much junk in here, you, you just couldn't even get in there. Last summer, in my effort to clean everything out that I don't use any longer, we got rid of a whole bunch of stuff. But the one, one of the things I got rid of was the lawnmower because I don't use it anymore because I just don't have time. We have a very small lawn anyways in here in the backyard and I don't have time to maintain that or really any of the rest of it. So we just hire a gardener who comes by every couple of weeks and he takes care of all of that. So I thought, I don't need that lawnmower anymore. Now here we are in the apocalypse and the gardener's not coming by anymore. <laughs> and so the lawn is just growing like crazy. But without that lawnmower here, at least it gives me a little bit of storage that I can put stuff here. I might bring that writing table down here just because my storage unit that I also pay a monthly fee for is also locked down so I can't get to any of my stuff there. Some of you might remember when I made these doors maybe five years ago, five or six years ago, and look how much they've warped. And this is because of using green wood from Home Depot and they just warp, they shrunk. This gap used to be right together. So I don't know, someday I'll have to make some new doors or something. I wanted to catch up on some things that we've been discussing over these past three weeks. First of all, I really enjoyed hearing all of your comments about different uh, slang terms that we can call other people instead of mate, which I contend there is still no equivalent of mate. But it seems like the top three contenders for an American alternative, according to the comments, is bud, man, and dude. And I think a lot of this is regional. It depends upon where you live in America. I guess on a personal level, I've called people bud, dude, and man, but it's not a regular kind of thing that I do. I, it, some of that makes me feel a little awkward, especially calling somebody dude. Let's put this in test of, say, going to a supermarket and there's a cashier there and you, you've got your order and, and you're leaving. Would you say, thanks, dude? I don't know, but it was really fun reading all of those comments and, and learning something about regional dialects. Oh, here's another regional dialect. And, and I, I mentioned this to somebody in the comments who talked about, well, how, I don't know, something about the language in Cali is different than the rest of the country. And that is a thing that is pretty much like a Midwestern word, Cali. I don't know anybody in California who calls California Cali. It's kind of like, uh, like the, the main, the biggest faux pas you can make in San Francisco is to call it Frisco. <laughs> Nobody does that. And that goes back like over a hundred years. There's two things you can call it. You can call it San Francisco or just the city. And I kind of think that's happening with Cali. I don't know. I, I've only been hearing Cali in the past few years from people outside of California. So I was thinking about my next project and I kind of, I know I don't wanna get hung up on making all these gym, home gym projects, but one thing I really would like to have are, is a set of dips bars, you know, just two parallel bars that I can do dips on. And also I could get underneath them and do some rows. So I might be doing that soon. I've been kind of playing around a little bit in SketchUp. I'll show you what I've come up with. Here's what I'm looking at and I think that I could get by with just using dowels here, like one inch dowels. I don't know, I could use some steel bars, but I think these would be strong enough. And I figured just two by fours for these upright. I'm pretty sure the base would be strong enough with just some lap joints, but obviously I don't want these two bars, you know, spreading apart. So I'll have to put in, you don't know, some sort of a cross piece probably you know, somewhere over here or something, I don't know, like that. But I don't want to have one on the front because I'd also like to do some kind of crunches on here, you know, lift the leg lifts. Uh, so if you have any ideas of what this might need, let me know. And of course, this is not anything to size yet. I'm sure I'll have to probably spread these further apart. And I think I want this gap wider so that I can get under here 
and do some rows. Anyways, just let me know your thoughts down in the comments and uh, I'll take a look at those. But you know, one thing I've learned about making the, the gym equipment is that when you start showing any gym equipment or you, especially if I show myself doing any kind of exercise, like the, the gym bros come out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> just to just to tell me how I'm doing everything wrong and how all the things I'm making are wrong ain't gonna stop me I'll make what I want oh and by the way I finally finished up this season of Ozark and wow that last episode was kind of a bit of a stunner there a very important person had something really bad happen to them at the end that I was not expecting I just realized this looks really dark let me brighten it up that looks a little better better I know you can, there's like a meter on my camera where it shows where it's supposed to be, but I find just looking at my screen here is, is a better indication of the brightness level. And shooting in here is really difficult unless I close the garage door because I like to have it open because I like all the fresh air and everything. But on cloudy days where there's some clouds and sun, it gets really difficult because all of a sudden it gets really bright and then it gets dark again. And you'd think after 11 years, my whole operation here would be a little bit more professional, but. So I see where a lot of people are, are making like these DIY masks to wear over your face now as you, as you go about your day and if you go into public. Well, this is the one I want to make from Friday the 13th part two. Wouldn't that just be awesome to just wear that to, to the supermarket? I mean, when else would I get a chance to wear that to the supermarket and not have anybody question, <laughs> question it? Oh, and speaking of creepy things, every time, let me move this camera around. Every time I show that, in a video, or it's in the background, it's in almost all my videos probably now, you can always see it there. People, uh, I always get a few people asking me about that. What is the pentagram? It's evil. Well, in all honesty, I'm not exactly sure how that got there. One day it just kind of showed up in my shop and I can't get it off the wall. I've even had experts come over here and see if they can remove it and nobody's been successful. Hey, do you guys like action movies? I mean, I'm talking over the top action movies. Check out VFW. I just saw it this weekend and it just, it's one of my favorite films this year. It's got a lot of veteran actors in it that you might recognize and it's got Norm from Cheers. And it's about this bar for combat veterans and <laughs> these guys are just totally, totally kick ass, but they have to defend the bar from these hordes of crazed lunatics and it's just, it is, it is a trip to watch. It's so satisfying to see all these old guys just kicking ass. Oh, I got a scrap wood idea for you guys, especially if you have little chunks of wood that you don't know what to do with. This is, got spider webs on it. This is a uh, art piece I made a few years ago. And if you haven't seen it, I, all I did was I just took different chunks of wood and just kind of made a mosaic out of it, you know, different thicknesses and tried to piece them together. I thought it was a really cool, fun way to get rid of those extra pieces of wood. There must be like six or seven different types of wood in there. And I just rounded over all the edges and made it really smooth. Something to think about maybe do this week. Another thing I'd like to hear from you guys about is if you have a workshop, what have you been doing in the past couple of weeks with all of this time on your hands? Let me know if you've made any cool project, if you just spent the time cleaning, if you've done something productive in your shop, I'd love to hear it. Those of us who have workshops are so lucky. We have an endless supply of things to do during lockdown. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.